All right, today we've got our 17th interview for you of the interviews I've done. This one, I think, might end up being the most fun one we've done, so I really hope you come on board. Uh, I have my, you know, set of questions, and at the end I ask, is there any question you'd like to be asked that you haven't been? And at that point, Sir Smokes just takes over the interview, and it's delightful, and I hope you come along with me and enjoy this interview. How would you describe your triple triad player style? I'd like to think my style is quite, re uh, quite aggressive, but in reality it's more defensive. It probably doesn't feel that way because it's quite loose. Much more instinctive than calculative, which almost certainly isn't the best way to play. I also fully admit to adapting my style depending on who I play. I can't play out 16 draws with Piggy, so we'll try to go more aggressive there. Uh, he is playing Piggy Man in the TTAC 14 semifinals. I maybe shouldn't release this video <laughs> until that match has been played, but shh, let's screw Smokes over. Unlikely I outplay you, so we'll go more defensive. Uh, you meaning me was up. Who is your most interesting opponent? I think that's changed a lot during my time on TTA. I think the ones that most stick out were the couple of series I had with Midas and Vid towards the end of the site before everyone left. I felt we were probably equal in playing terms, but arguably the weakest on the stacked rosters between Brotherhood of Seed and whoever stood up to them that season. Usually Avalanche, but Elites and T3 had their seasons. The teams were pretty stacked, so it always felt our games really mattered. I think I got the better of most of them, but Brotherhood of Seed won every clan league, so... We also played a few quarters and ha uh, semi uh, quarterfinals and semifinals. They were good games. I think Midas beat me in a semi of some tourney. He did. I want to go back and mention on the aggressive defensive thing, something that has really uh, interested me watching Smoke's games in the return is he is so capable of creating chances. It's, it's incredible to watch. Um, he's one of the players, like, I watch him a bit and I think, okay, he's good at standard defensive moves. And then I watch him play some other games, and that's the impression I always got, and I think that says he does play that way against me, but I see him play other people, and he just creates so many chances. For instance, as I record this, we are midway through his clan league match against Seto, who is, you know, between first and fourth best player of all time, and he's playing Seto, and they've played five games, and Smokes has created chances to win, meaning, like, he's ahead, and if he plays perfectly, he will win the game in three out of five games against Seto. A 60% chance creation rate from the stats I've kept is a phenomenal rate against the field. I think that's like about what I get versus the field, maybe a little higher than me, so about what Delhi gets versus the field. And he's doing it over five games versus Seto, just absolutely insane. Um, I remember in the first half of Clan League when he was playing Crescent that he just went, oh, I must win this game, and immediately played tons of combative diagonal moves and managed to pull out the win. Uh, so I do think it trends defensive, but is so happy to take complicated risks as well, and is so good at using those in ways that lead to uh, real winning chances. It's it's a big skill. Who is your toughest opponent? Uh, he is also, I should say, mentioned uh, Midas before. Um, he played Midas in the finals of the TTAC that Smokes won, and I believe they played in the semifinal of Ward around the same time. I think that's the one where Midas beat him. And had, he said those were some of the most fun games he's played and a wonderful back and forth. Who's your toughest opponent? That's a tough one. I played a lot of sets against great players, open trade with Kamikaze, Yojimbo, and I had a fair few games, most casual mind. We've had a couple of tourney games. Aki two-minute ga trade games were fun, but I think without a doubt the person with the best record against me was, drumroll, Great Sephiroth. I think I maybe got two or three wins from the several hundred games we played. His level four hand was brutal. I don't think he was the best, but certainly up there, and just for how many times he beat me, I have to put him as the toughest. What formation or move type do you like more than other players do? This can be for either open or closed, or answer for both. I really don't believe in formations. You surely change it, depending on your and your opponent's hand. That said, I will err away from X's. Way too tough to calculate. I have some similar feelings there. I think there are lots of moves. Another one for me is um, if cards are in 1, 2, and 9, I will very rarely play in 6 because I find it difficult to calculate out the resulting positions. Not because I think it's like fundamentally a bad move. 
And if you like knew your opponent was going in five at the end there, you could calculate it. But I think it concedes so many options. Most of the time, there are versions where it doesn't, where it's just to me not worth spending time trying to calculate. I should spend it on moves where I might be able to come to a firm conclusion. And so I think I feel similarly about X's is they are a mess and that can be too much to look for when there are other options. I get that's a wash of an answer, but I suppose I will venture towards trying to force an L if I'm second turn and play for an S or Q if I'm first. I've never been a fan of T's for some reason. I guess it's because you have to have two of the same direction, left, say, in a 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, T. Uh, same direction left, not the direction left, meaning, but, uh, yeah. So in that case, you'd need to have two of the same direction up, right? Uh, I said that terribly. His sentence made sense, but because I decided he meant the direction left, it did not. Opponent goes four and six. You have to have up strong. You have to have strong up facing cards. Two strong up facing cards, which which for the last two cards can lead to some weakness in taking. Favorite way to meet a corner. Uh, now my questions are of course spelled brilliantly and correctly, but he has intentionally misspelled favorite with a random U added in. The Brits are crazy people. Favorite way to meet a corner. Again, always situational, but probably a side corner. For instance, they play in three, I play in one. But I will try and play a high num number facing towards the three. That way, if they go in two, there is likely safety in four. So say they go x, x, a, four, and three. So that's three with a high number facing down. I go x, a, four, x, in one. So specifically with power facing towards them. So it is difficult for them to take in the in-between square and easy for you to lock in from the, the L square. I do think of Smokes as, a, as an adjacent corner and L setup kind of guy, but this is clearly a specific twist on it. Side starter, non-take to the side of it. For instance, if they go in six, I'd go in three or nine, preferably with a low number onto the six. This all assumes combo. Sometimes that's not possible, so I'm not adverse to a one or seven corner, so the far corner. Center starter, they're panicking, and you've already won. I say in jest, but at that point, it's potluck, really. Probably to the side, so 2, 4, 6, or 8. Do you have a preferred starter? I will tend to play corner starters, prefer preferably where I have a take in both spots with the same card, or there is one side the opponent cannot take, unless using a lot of resources in 5. 9-9 nine, nine with an opposite A9 is ideal. In closed, I will likely play a strong and weak-facing corner, like on level 10, a 9 or 10 one way, and a, and a 4 showing the other. This assumes all rules and a strong high number being available. I wouldn't play a 7-2 corner in level 2, for example. That would likely be a move in 2, 4, 6, or 8, with the 7 showing into 5. If there is no plus wall, I'm also more likely to play in these side squares, but I don't like playing without plus wall. Yeah, um, I think... There's an argument. Oh, I'm gonna pause one sec. I think there's an argument for um, not having the opposite a9 as the recapture, or at least not having it for long, because you know if you think like squall paired with a 9-9 corner opposite, um, because squall has such weak numbers out facing, if the square is surrounding your starter, um, so say you started in one, two, and four are left open. Squall will always have the recapture at the end, but often can't flip any other cards. So I sometimes try to construct a little differently there, to um, which I see as sort of creating more winning chances. But uh, honestly, Smokes creates winning chances at a rate higher than I do. Uh, so maybe this is not a real complaint. Uh, let's move on. If I'm making hands, there will be likely a strong corner starter, say 9, and then a card in 5, which gives me the plus in 6 and 8. Yeah, so... He does start with a card in a corner with a recapture card, but his hands will be built, if possible, to be able to set up something else to have multi-captures, and I think that's an important step. I tend to play very similarly in open and closed if I'm allowed to, but obviously if they have a strong answer in five, I can see an opening, and I won't. I do have the bad habit of making hands with two of the same corner, which make, really makes my start inflexible. It has to be one of them. But at the same time, I think sometimes you have to stick to the plan. That's something I've um, noticed. Also messing around with the computer, the computer is just if a hand comes in built to do something and is built well to do it, 
it's probably going to be a reasonable way to start, even if the opponent is well set up against it. And if they're well set up against it, you might not have that much winning chances, but it still is often safer than going off the beaten path. And that has also been my um, my performance a bit. I remember in the semifinals of Nephilim against Asala, um, the first game I did my intended starter, and he found a very effective way to neutralize it. I got a little pressure maybe, but he handled it very well. And then the second game, I tried to do something more creative using the same hand, and he played a fantastic reply and immediately had me in trouble. And the third game, I went back to the intended stuff, and he tried to switch it up, and I got the win there. But it was one of those, oh, no, no, do not. Your hand is built to do this. Stick with what you're built to do. I'm also such an instinctive lamer when I make hands. I tend to build strength going right, I guess because I'm right-handed. Some psychological babble there for sure, but even in all the above examples, without thinking, I gave starters being in 3, 6, and 9, and that's how I think when looking at the grid. That's interesting. I always kind of think of like 1, 2, and 3 if I'm giving examples, I just pick the lowest numbers, so action will always be kind of facing up, and if cards have a power, it will be down. I did in the first couple tournaments keep track of like, if it's a level 10 set, which direction do people have their 10s, and it's pretty clearly more up or down than side to side. You know, people use Squall Cypher more than they use Yuna Yuna. And there's a couple reasons for that. But I think this is true on a bunch of level pairs. It is not true for Silver Dragon and Harloot, the most classic level 7 pair. But that's only because, I think, there isn't an 8764 pair that does the same thing. And if there was, it hasn't been around as long. So I think in general, people will prefer up-down power to side to side. You know, if you know the opponent's hand has three eights in it, it is more likely that it's up, down, left, or up, down, right than if it's like left, right, down. But that might not be true facing Smokes. You know, Smokes clearly has this slight right orient, which is a kind of interesting, um, interesting quirk. Because we've all got them. Like, without thinking, we're all going to slightly bias towards cards and directions we like. And I think it's actually kind of a strength to be aware of how you see it. Because we're likely to do it, and... Um, Knowing how you're likely to do it is useful. How do you spend time during the opponent's move, thinking about specific lines, thinking about general things, spacing out? I usually calculate the board for about 20-30 seconds now I've played. I always find it easier to calculate once the card is in place. Often I will realize I've made a shocking error about 5 seconds after playing a card. I think we've all been there. Work out the move I'd least like to see than what I'd do in response. Then I go do something else. And I literally mean something else. I'll switch tabs or make food or browse TV mindlessly or read, etc. But usually, pacing or lifting weights or something physical. Truth be told, if I've taken more than three minutes to make a move, it's because I've lost and I'm desperately looking for a tie. Usually, the final couple of moves. Or I've forgotten to go back to the game because I got wrapped up in something else. I honestly find playing Triple Triad Advance at the competitive level very tiring. I get bored very easily. My performance drops off so much after a few games, so I have to preserve energy and attention. This is largely why I don't consider myself close to being a top player. This is a really interesting response, and kind of one I was thinking about when I did this, added this question, because for me, the other person's turn is time to recover from the exhaustion of trying to figure stuff out on my turn. And it's nice to hear another player who's like, got to get away from it, find something else to focus on to do, get myself reworked and functioning before I come back and think again. Smokes is, of course, also a, a very uh, quick and good fast player. What is your proudest triple triad moment? When I beat Seto today and win Clan League for AVL, that may happen, but it didn't happen today. Um, but they're currently still tied 1-1. As I record this, they may not be when it happens. That was followed by five exclamation marks. But in all seriousness, I'm not too sure I have many. Beating Jadat for assassins in Clan League when he was in Triforce back in the day was cool because nobody expected it. Largely, most of the things I'm proud about are in Clan League. Winning with Final Fantasy Freaks was out there. I don't mind losing or really hold much stock in winning, truth be told. I just don't like letting people down. I probably shouldn't really play Clan League for that reason, but then wouldn't I be letting people down by not playing? Oh, except for SE Gilgamesh. I was pissed I lost that. Alright, uh, so not giving much um, to be proud of. I really like 
you know, coming through for the team. I think it's neat when uh, people have those. I think it's interesting he doesn't mention winning TTAC at all or any of his many quarterfinal, semifinal runs. Um, but instead, doing things in clans that people didn't expect and that, you know, made the people around him have a chance and be happy. Uh, for what it's worth, he has been unbelievably good, probably tied for the best net performer, maybe a little better than Vialva overall, probably the MVP of Clan League this time around, um, maybe slightly depending on this finals. But I think even if he loses to Seto here, he's probably the overall MVP of Clan League. It's been an insane run. He is uh, very good at this. Banning Delhi. The jokey answer is to say yes, but Delhi is one of the best people I've spoken to, written to. He's beyond a good person, and the site would be a worse place without him. Plus, he hasn't beaten me in a tourney of late, so my hate is low, largely because we haven't played. Plus, who else will play drunken quick trade games with me? Oh, I remember, that made Delhi so happy, because normally he doesn't like playing slow, he takes his time, but he had so much fun when he and Smokes had this uh, quick match, and we're playing three minutes or two minutes or something, and we're just finding creative moves on each other and playing really just neat, fun games. And I think they both had a great time. But I remember especially Delial mentioning it was some of the most fun he'd had in a while with Triple Triad. Should Elemental be abolished? Obviously not. Never take away from the site. Should it be used in a, an official tourney? Probably not. It has a place just like random, adds variants, but probably shouldn't be used for who's the best, as SEs are supposed to be. What clans are the bestest? I don't think that was technically my question, but we'll allow it. I'm a very loyal person, despite my absolute clan whoring nature. Assassins was my f was the first, so loyalty rests there. Oh, and if I'm being totally honest, Brotherhood of Seed played a massive part in keeping the scene alive. Oh, I skipped a lot. Sorry. Assassins was the first and OG and will always be my favorite. Gotta gotta remember the good old days of Assassins. Me, Smoke, Slash, uh, Mark, Toshiro, Demonic Avenger, um, Jacques of Hearts. I'm sure I'm missing some, but we had a really tight-knit little group of which, you know, a few came out and ended up being tournament stars, but a bunch were just cool people. We had a great time there, and I, too, really uh, have a, a large fondness for that group. Uh, I led elites, had decent positions in FFF, T3, and AVL, but Assassins was the first, so loyalty rests there. Oh, and if I'm being totally honest, Brotherhood of Seed played a massive part in keeping the scene alive. Everyone needs a villain or rivalry in the scene to keep it interesting, and they played that part amazingly. Probably too well. Shame they kept winning. Most underrated player. I was gonna say, someone like Addy. Always got props for his closed play, but never that much for open, and he's pretty good. Then he had a few high-profile wins, so probably is now rated. Mm. Now I'd say Vialva and Yevon. Much better players than I think people give credit for. I'd maybe say Kress and Nemesis in that bracket, too. Yeah, I mean, these are all really good players that, uh, you know, don't star in too many of my videos, though I have had one specifically on Vialva and Yevon. Uh, not that my videos are the only way to get hype, but top three to five picks for GOAT. I played a fair amount back in the .NET days, so have a bit of a frame of reference for the older players. Not to disrespect anyone's achievements from then, but I do think the standard massively improved around 2006-7. As much as it pains me to say, I think it was a toss-up between you, was up, and Yojimbo, and he sadly won out around Quistus. He was always more likely to drop against a random opponent in fairness. See that one SE where he lost to Cliff, or the several times to De uh, Demonic, who in fairness was a champ assassin forever. But he did seem to have the beating of you in that era. How many times were you paired up in Clan League? It was crazily, definitely not random. So say, Yojimbo was up, Delial Placeto, just for the longevity. Great Sephiroth, because anyone who beat me that many times must be a goat. And he actually put it in order, unlike other people. I remember, um, uh, I, I don't know how many years ago this was. It was sometime after I had left, and I asked Smokes, who do you really think is the best ever? And I was definitely giving off huge insecure vibes, and he told me it was me, but now he has changed his tune. And I've won two tournaments since, so we can only establish that Smokes is quite a nice guy at supporting you when you feel insecure, but also, what a liar. Edit. Actually, uh, and I think this was a, yeah, 
Actually, I just remembered I got the site to change the number of cards needed for random by stacking, but with bad cards. That's a way more proud achievement. Yeah, lasting impact, he says. Yeah, this is an important change. You got accused of stacking enough that they changed the number of cards needed for randoms. That's, that's, that's making a difference in the community. And it is always funny to get accused of stacking when your hand is actually, when your cards are actually really bad cards for the level, and you're in fact getting pretty terrible hands. When did you start playing? I started playing, I think, in like 03, 04. I didn't actually have internet at my place back then, used to play after school while waiting for football practice. I was originally under the username Virgil because I was an edgy teen who liked shooting devils. Unfortunately, there was a much more established player called Virgil, which made it all rather awkward, and took me way too long to find out. Chat was blocked on the server. I do remember people asking why I'd reset my stats, and I didn't know what they were talking about. Actually, that might be something of a compliment if Smokes was already playing well enough that like, it wasn't seen as, oh, this must be a different person, um, because... It would be so easy, like, if I signed up for this, like, you know, if I as a noob signed up for the site and named myself, you know, Koner, right, and then started playing games, people would be like, this isn't Koner, right? Why is this guy playing terrible? Obviously, this is a different person. I do remember people asking why I'd reset my stats, and I didn't know what they were talking about. This reminds me, um, I remember the first, like, in-game chats I saw were like, hey, do you want to join a clan? Or do you have any interesting clans? You want to check out the clan scene? Things like that. And I would respond, "Oh, I'm already in a, I'm already in a clan." And they would be like, "No, you're not." And I'd be like, "Of course I am. I'm in a triple tried quest clan." And they'd be like, "Uh, that's not it." But by the time they'd send that, the game would be over. And so it took me like six months to learn there was like a chat and forums and all the other stuff, and that there were clans. I also didn't understand plus wall. I did win a Power Seraph in a trade game and sold it for a whopping 17,500 points, which I spent all on FF7 packs trying to get Knights of the Round, which you couldn't get in those packs back then. I'm glad they put the warnings up now. Anyways, I didn't even get a Cephi, but the ride was fun. I lost touch with the site when it made the switch to CA before finding it again. My guess is this is a little earlier than 0304, but I wouldn't know for sure. I wonder if anyone listening does. Favorite rule sets. Anything 5 or above with all rules. 7 is my favorite, 6 and 8 my least of those, but those are all chill really, compared with 1, and, one through 3. 1 and 2 are particularly bad. I need plus 12 to function. Oh, and shout out to closed random elemental. Surprisingly a tactical game, especially on level 5. I just want to say I haven't uh, commented near as much as I have on other interviews, because there's, there's so much here, and I think it you know, really speaks for itself quote uh, Hans Neiman. No one will get that. That's fine. Have you met any other players? A fair few. Lowlights and highlights, so let's stick with the latter. I met Rhinoa, who, bless her, gave me points to buy level 10s when I first started. I'm guessing she may have thought I was the other Virgil. Nice lass. Off saving the world slash environment now. Rhea is a champ who, despite being Welsh, is a good person. We've met up a few times, actually. First time he applied to my university whilst I was there, and since he's in a vaguely similar line of work as me, so we catch up every now and again. He's 6'4", and has an unexpectedly deep voice. Not what I would have expected. Uh, Smokes Ray and I had uh, my kind of main chat in life for a whole bunch of years of just, like, anything that happened I'd babble about there. And uh, it was a really wonderful place for me, and I'm, I'm glad they were friends. I hope they're still good friends. I kind of uh, blew up that chat by getting angry at stuff and ended it, but I hope they're still pals, and I didn't ruin it for them as well. <laughs> Boyer bought me, brought me whiskey from Scotland, which given he's from Canada, I think, is pretty impressive. He is. Nice chap, too. Those would be my top three. I was also going to meet this Waz guy, but he bailed, and now I've moved firm, so won't be in Boston for a while. Oh, that's totally an exclusive. Yes, we have breaking news. Cue some breaking news music. Dun, 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 whatever. Um, I'm handing in my notice tomorrow. Now, this was sent yesterday, so I think that means, and today is like a couple days before I'll release this video, maybe four days. So this might not be a breaking news exclusive, but I do think, I suspect most news agencies won't have gotten on this important story yet. So I guess we're breaking the news. Uh, Smokes handed in his notice, let's say, four days ago. I have a new and cooler job. You get all the scoops. 
Oh, I also did a lot of calls with Kadaj, if that counts as meeting. She was nice. Hope she's doing all right. Yeah, Kadaj was always great. I hope she's doing you well. Um, yeah. What's my biggest weakness? Geez, where to begin? I will more than likely lose any level 1 through 3 game with a 7 minute or more timer. In fact, a 7 minute timer is usually enough to make me lose interest. I often can be coerced into playing when I've got something else on my mind or at work or haven't slept in a while and I'm not feeling it. Smoke's sleeping habits are ridiculous, by the way. Just absolutely insane. Like, regularly will receive a message at, you know, midnight my time of him going, oh, I should get to sleep, I have to be up in two hours, and then he claims that's like his normal sleep schedule. What a ridiculous human being. I cannot imagine, much less anything else, but playing the level of triple triad he plays and how quickly he plays it on two hours of sleep a night. What, what an absurd human being. If my opponent plays for draws, I'll get frustrated and make some outlandish play, which nine out of ten times won't work. Cutting out rules works well, too. As I said, I play quite instinctively, and I'll forget the same isn't on or something daft. Ooh, this is bad news against Piggy, because Piggy's go-to strategy is we can tie 15 games. I'm ready. I'm all about the tie fest. I want to set tie records and wear you down. And Smoke's attitude is, oh no, I can't play more than like three games. We gotta get this done. And it will be interesting to see these, uh, these styles face off. Because I think Smokes can play defensively, but as said, he can also make games really combative really effectively. I think he just has very good instinct for what kind of moves will create create chances, as, as I said at the, at the top. It's a wonder I've got as far as I have in most tourneys, to be honest. Yeah, he has the fourth most icons ever. I'd like to say I can beat most players on my day, but I think the records show most top players beat me quite comfortably. If I recall correctly, you said I have an abnormally low score against the top 10. That's a interesting thing. I forgot. Let's go. Let's go look at the triple triad leaderboard. I won't flip you over because I do not have the setup to do that well because I am incompetent at video making. But let's just look at where Smoke stands on leaderboards because it's pretty damn impressive. And we may as well uh, give him some props here as he's saying, who knows how this happened. Uh, the leaderboard really doesn't want to load today. Give me just a moment. Uh, someone messaged me, but we can't we can't look into that. All right. Most wins. Smokes is 12th all time, but with his three wins so far this tournament, he is still 12th all time, but will almost certainly move into the top 10 very soon. For most championships, he you know he currently has one, but if he wins a second here in TTAC, he becomes one of 15 people. He has three finals, uh, which is tied 9th through 17th. If he makes the finals this time, he will be tied 7th through 9th. On the semifinals list, he's up to tied 4th, 5th with Delial, which is nuts. On the most icons list, he's up to 4th. Passing Seto to be clear fourth with 15, ahead of me, MC, Kamikaze, Nightwish, Vid, Turds, you know, Cookie, Chickeny, all the big people. Um, his icon rate, let's go find his icon rate, is 38%, which is pretty huge. Um, what else we got? His win rate versus winners. Is it abnormally low? 33% against other winners. And I think if you narrow it to the top group, it is a bit lower than that. Um, his win rate versus non-winners is 76%, um, which is 30th all time. And his win rate versus winners is 36th all time. So it looks like a huge gap, but it's actually maybe within normal bounds. But it's hurt by the fact that he's like net 0-7 or 0-8 against the top few people. Um, but yeah, Smokes is obviously a tremendous tournament player. Any other questions? So this is the part where my interview has ended and Smokes is now the interviewer. And please don't be annoyed at me, but he is obviously a better interviewer than I am. Any other questions? Loads. You haven't even asked how my day's going. Jeez, what happened to common courtesy? 
I will note he edited this, the initial message because smokes cannot type properly is what happened to common curtsy, and I can only apologize for not curtsying to smokes. Uh, let's think of some good questions you can ask in later interviews. If you could have one person rejoin, who and why? Obviously, great Sephiroth, so I can get my revenge for my trillion losses. What was your saddest triple triad advanced moment? Why do we only focus on the happy? Obviously, S.E. Gilgamesh. Uh, Smokes is a huge FF5 guy. It's his favorite FF, and he loves Gilgamesh. Uh, obviously, S.E. Gilgamesh. Joke of a call. Also, losing to Seto and CL today hurt a lot. Uh, oh, right. He said earlier that beating Seto today because they hadn't played any of the games yet. Uh, and then he added these later after having played Seto five games, winning one, losing one. Uh, losing to Seto and CL today hurt a lot. What surprised you about the returning of TTA? I think how little, but a lot. I think how little, but a lot, everyone has changed. We've all got jobs and stuff now, and maybe some of us are reverting to our former online personality. But man, it feels like most of us haven't changed that much from the angsty teens we once were. Isn't that a depressing or nice thought, depending on your view? Personally, I think it's a nice thing. I do too. Why do you still play? Why are we even back here? It was a fun pastime back then, and it's still now. Plus, I genuinely like meeting people. We've all something vaguely in common, are sad enough to be playing an online maths game derivative from a tiny optional part of one of 20-odd FF releases. Jesus, this has been hard work transcribing all of this for my video. What is wrong with you? Well, I'm sorry, I'm dyslexic wa was. Truth be told, I'm doing this whilst doing an onboarding interview for my new job, so I appreciate this will be a mess. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll edit it? I won't. I'm also really not that dyslexic. I use that as an excuse far too often. After a bit of practice, I can now pass the test to say I'm not. Still struggle to mix the first letter of people's first and surname mind. That's a really neat test if you didn't know. Take a name, say David Beckham, and try to say David Deckham. You wouldn't believe how much I struggle. What new features should be added? Let's bring back some of the TTN features. Element all, boo, no. 4x4 four four mode and random blocking squares. Not for main tourneys and stuff, but for fun random games. How do you go, go about building a hand? I'm shocked this isn't a question. What's up with that? I mentioned double corners earlier on, and I think that's the base of one of each corner, and then a starter is the easy way to think about it. Every level has its power cards. Level 10, 998s and 8768s. 9, A9s. A bit more varied, though. 8, 9854s and 8765s. 7, 8764s. 6, 7754s. 5, 7741s. 4, 7632s and that 17643. I remember Delhi saying, I love that four, uh, that 3674. Uh, what are some other level fours I can use that are 7643s? And I said, no, that's the only one, which is wrong. There's a 4673, but it's for the same corner. And he was like, oh, no wonder I like it so much. Level three, 6632s. Six, six, level two, that 17521, and then stuff close to it. Yeah, the 2517, though, yeah. Level one, that 16323, three, and then stuff close to it. See, level 1 and 2 are so lame, in that they are not. Yeah, for the lamer, they are, they are quite depressing levels. It's hard to find the dream card. Some interesting choices. He doesn't go for anything with a 10 on it on level 10. And I do think level uh, having a 10 on it's a pretty powerful effect. Um, on level 9, yeah, A9s are the best. On level 8, 9863s sometimes are in the conversation. Um... On level 7, I've 8-8 eight, eight corners are growing on me. Like, 8-7-6-4s are better, but 8-8 eight, eight corners can do something. Uh, also, Smokes has pointed out that, you know, 8 6 4 sixes and 8 6 3 sixes certainly have strong places. On level 6, I would mention 8 7 five, threes as well. On level 5, I love 6 7 six, threes. Uh, Otherwise, yeah, I just basically agree. It took me so long to ask you to do this. Am I a bad person? It did take me a long time to ask Smokes to do this interview, but let's hear his answer before I comment. Yes, but you probably knew that I would text dump, inco text dump incoherently on you, so you're forgiven, I guess? Should I have asked you to do this? Uh, no, that's the next question. So I will say, when I'm doing the interviews, I knew there were people I could get, and I knew there were people I'd have to reach to get, 
And I also knew there were people where I'd really enjoy the interview. And I know there are people where I might get really interesting thought out responses, but I just don't know because I don't know the people that well. So I've sort of tried to do a mix of people I know I'm going to be really happy with the interview and people where I just don't know what I'm going to get from them. And it's been kind of a miracle because everyone I haven't known very well has given these really excellent interviews and the people I knew would give good interviews gave good interviews with one exception. I really thought Scythe would give a good interview and it was terrible, Um, but I really thought that one would be good. But it's been this wonderful thing because I keep asking different people for interviews and a few have given kind of succinct ones, but they've generally all been interesting and fun and thoughtful. And that's been really nice to get from a game that some of the people I'm asking are, you know, 15 years removed from playing. And other people I just didn't know had interest in talking to me thoughtfully about it. And so it's been really, really nice and fulfilling on my end. And um, so one reason I left Smokes for later was just because I wanted to leave interviews I knew I'd be really happy with. And there are a couple still out there. And you can probably figure out who they are of people I think are I'm close to that I haven't interviewed yet. And uh, Smokes was someone I'd saved on that front. Should I have asked you to do this in an interview on Skype or something? Yes, obviously. Jeez, this is on you. Yeah, we're really, we're really coming at my interview. And fairly, though, I think. More personal questions. What do you enjoy outside of Triple Triad Advance? Most things I do outside of work is to unwind. Somewhere between sports and a big fan of taking stupidly long, overly warm showers. Long, long warm showers are great. I used to do a fair amount of football and boxing, but alas, age has caught up to me. Now I tend to watch other people do it and pretend I could have done better if not for that one injury, etc., etc. Classic. I'm also big into cooking, which probably explains why despite all the sports, I'm not as jacked as Aki. I'm also big on reading whenever I can. I basically grew up in a library, so never have been able to shake that. So what was the last book you read? Debt by David Graeber. He argues debt isn't real and it's a modern social construct. It's also bullocks. Uh, Debt by David Graeber is supposed to be pretty good. I should, probably shouldn't get in political fights with him, but um, I, I do think modern monetary theory is not quite right, but I think the amount debt impacts wealthy countries is massively overstated and wealthy countries have repeatedly acted to hurt their citizens and others, but in this case, primarily their own um, with completely unnecessary austerity. And there can be differences. I understand Europe's economy functions differently than the U.S.'s in a lot of ways. So my natural comparisons aren't perfect analogies, but, uh, I think death's supposed to be pretty good. I probably disagree with Smokes on it, but shh. Who's the best football team ever? Probably the City one, if we're honest. That or the Barca team of Xavi, Iniesta, Messi, Cor. Much like TTA, I do think Standard have improved a lot lot in football. That said, I imagine all three of the Barca Cor would have been injured beyond playing had they been about in the 70s or so. Sorry, I mean Fulham. Uh, yeah. Now I'm thinking about this question. All right, so this City team is insane. Um, both the City and Liverpool team, the ridiculous numbers they've run up in what's pretty clearly the best league and just has so much money in it at this point that it's the lower tier teams in the league are so much better than the weaker teams in the other big leagues that it's just harder to run up points. And yet they've been running up more, so some people conclude it's easier, but they're they're clearly wrong. Uh and Man City has clearly been the better of the two teams. There's a good case for it. Those Barca teams were insane, though. They are probably the comparison. And uh, also, obviously, football has increased so much in skill. Um, Like, I I think Inverting the Pyramid's a pretty good book. I'm sure there's more thoughtful stuff out since. But the the amount of different things players... Like, the total football of the Johan Cruyff era is so... The skills that players had to have then are so much less than what they need to have now. It's just such a big jump. And even, you know, the last 10 years, there have been big tactical and figuring out player roles jumps. It's 
it's really cool to live through sports going through somewhat statistical, but somewhat just generally understanding revolutions. And a lot of them are having it. And I think soccer has been going on a long way, you know, dead bog standard formations like the 4-2-3-1 basically get popularized in like the early 2000s. This is not that long ago. Like the early 2000s Valencia team is one of the first to, you know, play a formation like that. It's just a lot of the modern stuff is also recent. Sure, the 4-4 Fukin 2 has been around forever, but you know, like the, the better formations. Um, anyway, let's get back to his interview. What's up with your nickname? Are you a big pothead? No, not in the slightest. Stay in school. Drugs aren't cool, etc. Good to have a PSA at the end of this interview from Smokes. Uh, you know the story. See if you can relay it. Or don't. I added more questions than your survey had, I think. What's something people... So, uh, he says I know the story. I don't think I know the story, and that's kind of embarrassing for me. So let's, what we'll tell him, he won't make it this far watching this interview. We've learned his attention span. He won't stick through this, hearing my voice. That's awful enough. You know, he won't get here. So let's, if he asks, we'll pretend I told the story, or at least I'm not, you know, wisely nodded as if I had known the story, and he'll never know that I, I, I don't think I do. What's something people probably don't know about you? I'm a collector of a lot of things. My house is starting to look a bit like a museum. I own stuff like fossils, meteors, a lot of minerals and things. It's all super cool, I swear it. I have no idea about any of that. Um, I always like when people are interested in lots of different things and stuff that, you know, is not necessarily the stuff that other people around them are interested in. I think it's cool. Smokes love its anteaters. That's why it's the picture. Um, you know, we're all here because we love Triple Triad, which is this weird niche interest that we love and get joy from. And that's great. And it's neat when people have other kind of niche interests. And like, you know, I like sports, but liking sports is very generic. And it's not that it has to be something, you know, unique or different. It's that it's neat when it's something like someone's clearly into most likely, and you, you never know, but like, not because they were surrounded by people who loved it, or it was just the thing they were always around, but because it really appealed to them, and they got into it, and it really spent time and thought on it. So, okay, uh, that's the Smokes interview. This is going to be the longest interview left. Uh, ooh, I can't even speak. The longest interview yet, and uh, I didn't even comment all that much. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. We hit so many topics. Um, if it was incoherent at points, that is entirely Smoke's fault and not me being bad at reading. And I think we should end there. So, cheers. <laughs>